listening. You know it's essential for your professional career, your personal life, your community life. And yet, most people still don't know how to do it very well. If you'd like to learn some practical tips about how to use these two things on the side of your head more effectively, then you're in the right place. Let's go. Hi folks, welcome to the Moving Beyond Being Good podcast by Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter. In this podcast, Gary shares everything about servant leadership, service leadership, authentic leadership, how to create high performance cultures, service excellence and life balance. Here's your host, Gary Ryan. Thank you, Sienna, for your lovely introduction, folks. This short episode is going to focus on listening. We all know it's an important skill, and yet there are some very simple, practical things you can do to significantly improve your listening that most people still aren't doing. Now, I know that these things I'm going to teach you work because by all the personality profiling tool assessments, I'm not supposed to be a very good listener. And yet, the feedback that I get consistently talks about how well I listen. And it's because, like any skill, once you break it down and understand some of the fundamentals that you can train and drill and practice, you can significantly enhance your listening, irrespective of whatever your personality profile might happen to be. So, The first thing to do to improve your listening is you need to decide that you want to improve your listening. You've got to make that decision. It starts with your mindset or as we talk about in organizations that matter, your mental models. You've got to have the mental model that I want to get better at my listening. Then equally, the way we think affects what we say and then what we do. So if you're thinking about talking to someone, There's probably only one person when you're talking to someone that's expected to listen, and that's the other person or people, however many might happen to be there. When you change your thinking and speaking to I'm talking with other people, that first step, that first mindset shift makes a massive difference in your understanding of your role in the listening. Because you understand, if I'm talking with someone, they're going to be speaking too. And I better make sure that I listen to understand what they're coming from. Now, I just used the phrase, listen to understand. When you're listening from the perspective, your mindset, that I'm deliberately trying to make sure that I understand first what it is the other person is saying, that makes another massive difference to your listening. Notice that I'm saying listen to understand not listen to agree. This is not about agreeing with other people. It's about understanding and demonstrating to them that you are understanding. Now, a thing to practice is to be listening for the words that stand out, the key words that are often nouns, verbs, or action phrases, or nouns that reflect feelings. If you're looking for those four categories, while you're listening, if you're listening for those words that are names of things, names of people. By the way, how many of you say, I can't remember people's names? They're just a noun, folks. And that that self-talk does not help you listen because you've convinced yourself you can't remember people's names. So I'm going to remember as many names as I can. It's far more useful, far more productive than saying, I can't remember people's names, okay? So change that mindset to think about the nouns, the naming words, the verbs or action words, the action phrases, and or when people name feelings. These are key words. Any other words that are repeated. What you can do with these key words is if you're online, for example, use a notebook or in a meeting, take a notebook and take notes. Note the key words. You don't have to record what people say verbatim, but be listening for these key words. And in doing so, you start to notice the nouns, the verbs, the action phrases, and or feelings that people are expressing. To demonstrate to someone that you have understood them, one of the techniques is to duplicate these key words when we have the conversation with them and we build into the conversation the very nouns, verbs, action phrases or feelings the people have said themselves. And what that does 
is that helps them to subconsciously recognize you actually listen to me. Now, when most people in the world, possibly even including you, don't feel like anyone's actually listening to you, it significantly raises what people think of you when they see you as someone who listens. So by using these duplications, you can help check your understanding of what they've said. So again, we're not saying agreeing, we're saying understanding. So you mentioned this name and you mentioned this place and you talked about doing this. And what I wanted to understand a little bit further was when you mentioned this person's name and you were doing this action, I want to understand a little bit more about why you were doing that. Now, if you were listening in that manner and able to talk with someone like that, that really shows them that you bothered to listen. Okay, it might be that your understanding is not 100% clear. That's why you're engaging in the conversation and they help you get more clear. When your intent is to listen for understanding first, that makes an amazing difference to the quality of what your listening is doing. And these techniques around looking for the words to duplicate are amazing. Now, you can also use other tools. Often, you know, we can use our hands, we can use our fingers. So the first thing that you said you wanted to do was A, and then you mentioned that you wanted to do B and then C. Have I heard that correctly? And you might discover, no, well, actually, there's a D here too that I'd missed. And then in discussing the A, B, C, and D, we discover, no, there's an E. There's another element that I'd missed. When you're open to listening for understanding, you don't get stressed that you didn't capture everything right correctly in the first instance. You're using your conversation skills, you're using these duplication skills to get clarity. And I talk about clarity is queen. And the more we've listened, the more we've understood, the more we can raise clarity. And I can assure you folks that the vast majority of problems that you're having at work, at home and in your community when it comes to communication is due to a lack of clarity. And if you choose yourself to improve the quality of your listening, you are going to find you are going to contribute to raising clarity for people. Just last week in coaching a client, when I was listening and I thought I'd understood three key elements of these various roles that he was speaking about regarding someone else, we quickly discovered, in fact, there was four different roles. And then, in fact, there was five different roles. And I literally had my hand like this as we were talking. And by pointing at these different roles, which now had different names, we we're able to keep that really clear. Now, in doing so, we uncovered some clarity that was missing for all parties involved in this unfortunately difficult scenario that had emerged. Just as an external person, just by listening for understanding, I was able to help, as William Urey describes, provide the third side of what was going on. And as a result, raise clarity for everyone involved in that actual conflict. Your listening is 100% learnable. It is 100% improvable. You just need to decide and make the decision to practice these skills in every conversation you have. You will find it will improve your personal relationships your professional relationships and relationships with anyone in the community. I'm Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter. This is the Moving Beyond Being Good podcast and I look forward to sharing the next episode with you soon.